This morning, I want to give thanks to our worship team. Uh, unfortunately, uh, Greg was feeling poorly today, and everybody on the worship team was contacted and to step in and take over what we were all scheduled to do. So I want to thank them very much because they all stepped up and helped out with everybody as we continue the service today. I am thankful this morning for my family, my church family, my friends, good health, and just in general being able to be here. Amen. <laughs> I'm thankful for all of you.
said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Now turn page 79. Let us confess our sins against God and our neighbors. Most merciful Father, we confess that we have sinned against you in God, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We are truly sorry and we will not repent. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us and forgive us, that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, have mercy on you. Forgive us all our sins through our Lord Jesus Christ. Strengthen us in all our goodness. And by the power of the Holy Spirit, keep us in your eternal life. Amen. The inventory was altered. Lord, open our lips. And our souls will bring your praise. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Now if you turn, okay, the Lord is, the earth is the Lord's, for he made it. Come, let us adore him. Hallelujah. Now if you turn to page 92. Venete. We'll read this together. 82, I'm sorry. <laughs> Come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout for joy to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before the presence of the thanksgiving and raise a loud shout to be in the song. For the Lord is a great God, and a great King of all gods. In his hands are the characters of the earth, and the heights of the hills are his also. The sea is his, for he made it, and his hands are molded by the right hand. Come, let us bow down and bend the knee, and kneel before the Lord our Maker. For he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture. And sheep of his hand. Oh, that today we put our to his voice. You know the sound? So, this morning we will do responsibly and it is in your hand. If the Lord had not been on our side, let Israel now say. If the Lord had not been on our side, when enemies rose up against us, then we would have swallowed up alive. If the enemies came before us, then would the waters have overwhelmed us, and the torrent gone over us. Then would the raging waters have gone right over us. Blessed be the Lord. He has not given us power to be the greater We have escaped like a bird from the snare of the fire. The, the snare, snare of the fire, and, and we have escaped. Our help is in the name of the Lord. The maker of heaven and the earth. For Pharaoh. But the more they were oppressed, the more they multiplied and spread. 
So that the Egyptians came to dread the Israelites, the Egyptians became ruthless in imposing tasks on the Israelites and made their lives bitter with hard service and mortar and brick and every kind of field labor. They were ruthless in all the tasks and they imposed upon them. The king of Egypt and to the Hebrew midwives, one of whom was named Shavara, and the other Theo. When you act as midwives to the Hebrew woman and see them on the birth stool, if it is a boy, kill him. But if it is a girl, she shall live. But the midwives feared God. They did not do as the king of Egypt commanded them, and they let the boys live. So the king of Egypt summoned the midwives and said to them, Why have you done this? And allowed the boys to live. The midwives said to Pharaoh, Because the Hebrew women are not like the Egyptian women, for they are vigorous and give birth before the midwife comes to them. So God dealt with them, with the midwives, and the people multiplied and became very strong. And because the midwives feared God, he gave them families. Then Pharaoh commanded all his people, Every boy that is born to the Hebrews, you shall throw into the Nile, but you shall let every girl live. No a man from the house of Levi went and married a Levite woman. The woman conceived and bore a son, and when she saw that he was a fine baby, she hid him for three months. When she could hide him no longer, she got a papyrus basket for him and plastered it with bitumen and pitch. She put the child in it and placed it among the reeds on the bank of the river. His sister stood at a distance to see what had happened to him. The daughter of Pharaoh came down to bathe at the river. While her attendants walked beside the river, she saw the basket among the reeds and sent her maid to bring it in. When she opened it, she saw the child. He was crying, and she took pity on him. This must be one of the Hebrew children, she said. Then the sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, Shall I go and get your nurse from the Hebrew woman to nurse the child for you? The Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Yes. So the girl went and called the child's mother. Pharaoh's daughter said to her, Take this child and nurse it for me, and I will give you your wages. So the woman took the child and nursed it. When the child grew up, she brought him to Pharaoh and to Pharaoh's daughter, and she took him to her own son. She named him Moses because she said, He drew out of the water. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Now turn to page 91, Canful 15. We'll read this together also. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God, the Savior. For he shall look with favor on his lowly servant. From this day, all generations will follow me thus. The Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. He has mercy on those who fear him in every generation. He has shown the strength of his arm. He has scattered the proud in the princes. He has cast down the mighty from their thrones and has lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things, and the rich he has sent away. He has come to talk up the servant of Israel, for he has remembered his promise of mercy, the promise he made to our fathers, to Abraham and his children forever. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and will be forever. Amen. to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds, 
So you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. For by the grace given to me, I say to everyone among you, not to think of yourself more highly than you ought to think, but to think with sober judgment, each according to the measure of faith that God has assigned. For as in one body we have many members, and that all the members have the same function. So we who are many are one body in Christ, and individually we are members of one another. We have gifts that differ according to the grace given to us, prophecy in proportion to faith, ministry in ministry, the teacher in teaching, the exhorter in exhortation, the giver in generosity, the leader in diligence, the compassionate, and the cheerfulness. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. God. Now if you turn to page 94, we'll do Canticle 19, the Psalm of the Redeemed, together. O Lord of the universe, Lord God, great deeds are they that you have done, surpassing human understanding. Your ways are always righteousness and truth, O King of all ages. Who can fail to do your homage, Lord, and to sing the praises of your name? For you are one by the Holy One. All nations will draw near and fall down before you, because your just and holy works have been revealed. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, it is now, and it will be forever. Amen. <coughs> Everybody will turn to page 680 of the and we will send, O oh God, our help in the ages past. <laughs>
Then he sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. The word of the Lord. Thanks. 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 Today's sermon was written by a Reverend Charles Hoffaker in Greenbelt, Maryland. Ask a group of people to keep a secret, and you're looking for trouble. <laughs> More than likely, somebody's going to let it out, especially if the secret is astonishing. Simon Peter is the first disciple to recognize that Jesus is the Messiah. He's the first to discover that this man he knows so well is the one anointed by God, the Messiah, sent to deliver Israel from bondage. Peter says as much when Jesus asks him, point blank, who do you say that I am? Peter's answer marks him as the star of and he receives a reward. Jesus promises to build his church on the rock foundation of his faith. He gives Peter executive authority and promises to support him. Here, Peter stands for the whole church. Jesus entrusts his mission to all who recognize him as the Messiah. What a glorious development! Now should be the time to call in the media. Get out the word. Let everybody know the Messiah is coming and is setting up his organization. Uh, but it's not time for press releases, <coughs> photo opportunities, or sound bites. Far from it. Did you notice the ending of today's gospel? Here it is again. Jesus sternly ordered the disciples not to tell anyone that he was the Messiah. No one. No one. Mom's the word. Can the publicity keep the secret? Why is Jesus intent on keeping his being the Messiah secret? Why not let it out? Now that he's admitted who he is, and all his disciples know it, does he really think it can be kept quiet? Won't it travel from mouth to ear with the speed of novelty? The voices that ask, have you heard? Will multiply rapidly across the land. It's not just this once that Jesus wants his identity to stay a secret. Repeatedly throughout the Gospels, he tries to keep from becoming the talk of whatever town he's in. Yet when he performs such deeds as healing the sick, raising the dead, feeding the hungry, when he fulfills his mess messianic and trap description, how are people expected to keep his identity to themselves? And why should they? What he does in one community after another is a publicist's dream. The guy's got the money to sell the stuff. He's going to be big. Really big. There's a name for everything Jesus does in an effort to pass unrecognized for who he is. Students of the Bible call this the messianic secret. <coughs> What's behind it? The most convincing explanation is that he does not want to be acknowledged as the Messiah outside his death and resurrection. Only in light of those events can people begin to recognize what his being the Messiah really means. If they hear he is the Messiah before he even gets to the cross, they're sure to misunderstand him. Rather than being a Messiah of sacrifice and triumph, they will see him as someone who has come to solve their problems. A Mr. Fix it from on top. Rather than recognize him as the one who calls them to their own death and resurrection, the crowds are likely to view him as a Messiah sent to pamper their egos and make their lives comfortable. Jesus does not want his ministry to be seen in the wrong light. For this reason, he prefers that his, only his immediate servants know that he is the one God has sent. Him. The opportunity will come later for them to announce that he is Messiah. That opportunity will come once the crucifixion takes place and he returns from his death. The Messianic secret helps us understand what goes on in the gospel story. Why Jesus sometimes behaves in a way that seems incomprehensible. But the Messianic secret is more than that. For it has contemporary application. 
time and ready to misunderstand <laughs> Jesus because they wanted to be expected. A Messiah of a different kind to be sent to them from God. They were expecting a warrior to defeat the Romans. People today are also ready to misunderstand Jesus. We want to expect a Messiah different from the one sent to us. We expect someone who saves us easily and asks from us nothing at all. We want a Jesus who doesn't die, or at least doesn't expect us to follow him in doing so. While we hope for someone to do easy, what the gospel offers is a scandal. What does a scandal involve? First, we know God best through this one human being, a single life where a word becomes flesh. But this particularity is only the start of the scandal. The gospel goes on to insist that we know him most completely, not through the notable events of his life, but by his gruesome dying and his incomprehensible resurrection. The scandal becomes even greater. His cross and triumph do not adequately reveal him until we become participants in them and accept them as our own. With Jesus, we must die and rise if he is to be our Messiah. In our time, the messianic secret has changed. Once met, not announcing Jesus as a promised one until his death and resurrection revealed him completely. Now it means not announcing Jesus without the cross and the empty tomb. Not announcing him unless we are ready to die and rise together with him. There are plenty of versions of Jesus abroad in the world today. Once again, he's become a star. He's big, really big. Some of these versions are authentic. Many of them are not. What makes a version authentic is not a denominational or cultural label or any other make, marking likely to set us at ease. What makes a version of Jesus the real thing and not human fantasy is whether it invariably returns us to what is most important, what reveals divine love completely. We can welcome no Jesus without the cross. We can welcome no Jesus who remains dead. We will accept no easy Messiah whose hands remain unwounded. If we are to call ourselves Christians, members of his church, then we will accept the Messiah crucified and risen, not only 2,000 years ago, but crucified and risen inside our own lives as well. Then and only then are we dealing with the real Jesus. <laughs> Moreover, we will not keep the Messiah secret. The world, the one where we spend our days, still waits for him. The world is dying to meet him through us. Not the true page 96. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and buried. He descended to the dead. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, and the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Then on page 97. The Lord's Prayer. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. Turn to your bulletins, we'll do the column. Grant, O oh merciful God, that your church, being gathered in unity by our Holy Spirit, may show forth your power among all peoples, to the glory of your name, through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit.
the sons of those in need in our prayers, may the sick and sorrow be held in your own heart. Instead, I'm Freedom, remember Sherry, uh, Lisa, Mary Lou, Penny, Alfred, Liz, Betsy, Chuck, Megan, Ed, Danielle, Tim Leo, and their families. Anyone else? You must do. Rich. For all veterans, for all first responders, and those who may wish to name this time. Our help is in your name, O Lord. Heal what you us. us. O my God, you have promised through your beloved Son that not even the gates of Hades will prevail against the people of your redeemed. <coughs> may we pray this time my parents and I are family members of the God of the world, which is an important part of the chapter. I am comfort in your heavenly kingdom. Our help is in your name, O oh Lord. Dear Father, Lord, 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 us. Hasten, Father of thy kingdom, and grant it with our servants. We now live by faith. May it with joy behold your Son at this coming in glorious majesty. Even Jesus Christ, our holy mediator and advocator. Amen. Amen. Sure. Peace of the Lord be with us all. And also with you. Peace, everybody. Peace. 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 We'll all turn to page 304.
in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Serve the Lord. Praise be God. Hallelujah.